Welcome to the Missouri Baptist Football Coaches Show. I'm Harry Schrader, head coach Jason Burianek is with us and two game winning streak, that sounds good. Uh, but the first question is this, uh, you know, like, are you wearing like lucky underwear, you're not shaving? I mean, like, are there any superstitions you guys are doing you haven't changed your shirt? No, none that I can think of, okay. but uh, yeah, the, uh, things have definitely been going our way. God's been on our side, so uh, whatever we're doing, we got to keep it going. My dad always used to say winning's better than losing, and that obviously is playing out true. It's got to be a, just a lighter atmosphere, a little bit, for the guys. I mean, they're still working hard, but knowing, hey, we've got that monkey off our back a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. I think it just brings them a little bit. They're a little bit more refreshed coming to practice. You know, it's uh, a little bit more fun when you're coming and you're seeing some success. The work week doesn't seem quite as long. You know, uh, uh, when you're going through the losing streak and you've got that gorilla that everybody knows, it's kind of the elephant in the room. But um, it's been nice to get that off and um, just start focusing on what, the, what our job is the next game, uh, not putting the pressure on that, hey, this is an opportunity to end it. You know, it's okay, that's behind us. Um, now we're, what we're talking about is now this is an opportunity for you to go get another win and um, you know what are the steps and the processes and it's all the same of what we've been talking about every week and the thing that we're talking to them about and I, I thought they handled it very well is that yeah it's a rivalry game against Belleville um, but we didn't we didn't uh, play that up too much to them throughout the week you know that was something that was understood we, we just kind of told them hey you know this is a big game because it's the next game and it's the next opportunity for us to go out and prove uh, that we're taking steps forward and, and I thought they did that you guys have won two in a row and you've won it without your starting quarterback without your starting running back that says a lot about where the program's at that you guys could lose your number one guy in a couple of key spots and you're still winning games yeah, you know, uh, the depth was something we haven't had. We still don't have a tremendous amount of depth, but what we have is guys that are able to start filling in some of those holes. You know, uh, obviously Austin Schultz came in, Tyler Curtis came in, played very well. Uh, Kendall Davis has given us a lot, but then, you know, he was out then with a wrist injury and then later in the game with uh, concussion symptoms. So we had to step up and we'll, we'll have to play without him this week as well. So, um, you know, it's just kind of the next man up mentality. And I think I give a lot of credit to the coaching staff and to the players players because uh, when those things happen there's not a lot of panic it's you know okay Tyler it's your turn to carry the ball Austin it's your turn to carry the ball Gunner it's your turn to uh, lead the team um, Jordan Norwine it's your turn whoever it may be um, you know Mitch Andres was our um, really our one of our backup offensive linemen that went in and played an entire game at um, right guard and did a did a nice job so Everybody, you know, they know their role. And the one thing we really preach to them about is that you never know when you're going to get your opportunity, and it's up to you if you're going to really be committed to this team. You've got to be ready when that time comes. Crossover game with Olivet Nazarene, a big game for you guys. You're both, you know, 500 in the, in the conference, and so that's important. Uh, but how do you refocus week after week? You know, you talk about, well, it's just the next game. And new opponent, new challenges. Yeah, and that's what makes this great game great is every week we've got to make slight adjustments because of this is something they do different offensively than what we've seen the last week. But uh, really that's our culture starting to come through in that we talk to them about playing with effort and bringing a lot of focus to the field every day at practice. And we've been getting that very, a lot more consistently as the year's gone, as the year's gone on. And we, we talk about it literally every day. I'm sure uh, the guys are really sick and tired of hearing me talk about uh, uh, relentless effort and maximum focus because we just repeat it all the time but what it's doing is it's starting to uh, sink in you know and we talk to them about accepting the challenge and they've done that so um, that's really our culture and guys buying into the culture guys executing what we're asking them to do and then at the end at the end of the day we've really kind of taken a step back and simplified a few things and just said we're going to really focus on these things become really good at it and I thought it showed through um, at the Linwood game. Uh, Antonio Barton, Billy Ritchie, Alex McGlacian, what's their status health-wise? Uh, Billy should be back. Uh, Alex is still going to be probably questionable at best this week. Uh, Antonio will find, we'll know more today. Um, by the end of the midweek practice, we'll know uh, whether he's going to be good to go or not. But uh, things are looking good for him there. Uh, we should have Steven Lopez back this week at guard, which would, is going to be key. So uh, we're starting to get some guys healthy. We, uh, like I said, Kendall will be out this week with concussion uh, symptoms, but he'll be back, I, I expect, by homecoming. And, um, you know, I, I think we're going to be ready and focused for this week's challenge. You talked about Austin Schultz. No doubt it was his finest hour as a Spartan. Uh, ran over 70 yards. Um, really gave you a spark in the running game. 
Yeah, Austin is that guy who um, we've we've mentioned his name, you know, over the years he's been here, and we've mentioned it this year as well. He's a hardworking guy. He comes to work every day and prepares. And you know, there's some weeks where he maybe gets five carries, and then last week, you know, we've got to uh, give him a lot of carries, and he's got to be the guy in the running game. So, you know, he's a guy that you just don't know. Um, it's going to be kind of game to game. You know, if we need somebody who's going to be downhill runner and, and we're getting our inside running game going, then he's going to uh, be an impact guy. But the thing that he does is he prepares for every week the same, and, and that's a credit to who he is as a person. Defensively, you only give up seven points in, in a game plus, yeah. and, uh, and, and you win the contest. Malik Ross finally gets his first sack of the year. It, you know, it's probably something that was working on his brain a little bit. Uh, just talk about your defense. They've really improved as the season has gone on. Yeah, they have. They they have. Um, we have the most veterans on defense, so that's something we've really challenged them with. Is that we've got to be um, more efficient than what we had been, especially early on in the season. We've got some guys in position. We've got competition at position, so it gives us the flexibility to play the hot hand, so to speak, especially out at corner. You know, mm -hmm. we rotate guys at corner quite a bit. See who's got the hot hand. Uh, obviously, Keenan Savage is playing at a high level. Um, Eddie Calderon's playing at a very high level. Uh, Sean Geary's playing at a high level. So we're, we're getting guys. I, I credit our defensive coaching staff because we meet every night after practice and really they do a great job of getting into the film study to prepare the guys for what they're going to see. Uh, we go into the week having a great game plan and that just comes out uh, on game day. But really what what has really taken over is just how we have prepared these guys throughout the week and the and the work that those guys put into preparing throughout the week has, has really made a difference. So they, they're, they're playing at a very high level. They're locked in and, and uh, it's fun to watch them every Saturday. Let's talk about Olivet Nazarene. Uh, they're two and four, one and one in the league. So people are two and four. Okay, they're not that good. They shut out Lindenwood Belleville. Yeah. Uh, and they've, they've played some good teams, very tough. They're, they're a good football team despite a two and four record. No, no, no question. They have a new head coach that is uh, there this year for the first time, new staff. Uh, I think that they're trying to get things turned around a little bit and headed in the right direction. Uh, they, when you watch film on them, they're very similar to us. You know, they, I think they play extremely hard. They maybe don't have the talent at the, some of the positions, um, but that's the way we are. You know, we're, we're not the most talented bunch out there. So uh, you've got to make up for some of that with how hard you play and the effort that you give, and they do that. Uh, they've got a freshman quarterback that is very good. He can throw the ball deep. They've got some speed guys out there that can make big plays. Uh, the freshman quarterback is also really good with his feet. So um, defensively, you know, they're, they're going to be a challenge. They're, they're not the biggest group that we've seen up front. So it'll be interesting to see how, how we play that out. But what they are is they're always in the right spot. Their defense is very well coached. They're prepared. They don't really get out of position. They don't make those mental errors that are going to give you big plays. So uh, it should be a, a very tough game for us. It's something that you look at scores and, um, you know, they've, they didn't, they played Taylor very tough. You know, they, um, they, beat Belleville 25 nothing. So they had some things go their way in that game, but they created a lot of those things, especially in special teams. So they're a very good team that we've got to be ready for. You, their quarterback, uh, Lawton, has thrown for over 1,200 yards already. So yeah, he's a quality guy. Yeah, he is, and he's just a freshman. So uh, he, he can make plays. What makes him tough is he can throw that deep ball. You know, They've got some guys who can stretch vertically. He can escape the pocket, but when he does that, he's still looking downfield. If he decides to tuck it, he can, you know, hit you with 15 yard or you know real quick because he's he's got some good quickness and he's, he's elusive. But what he's really good about is escaping pressure and then keeping his eyes downfield. And all of a sudden, you know, it's hard on a secondary when he's running around back there for eight seconds to keep up with their guys. So all of a sudden now he finds that guy. It's a big play, touchdown or or you know, 50, 60 yard gain. So we've definitely got to corral him. We've got to make sure that we're, uh, you know, when he is scrambling, that we find those guys and really keep with them so, he, uh, so that we don't give up those big plays. I want to go back in time a little bit. A couple of weeks ago, I'm watching the game that you win with a late field goal, yeah. and I'm screaming at my TV screen, my computer screen, because you've got the injured kicker that you're setting up for a game-winning field goal. And I'm yeah. thinking, what are you thinking? Honestly, I was thinking, what is he thinking? And Ethan comes through. I mean, that was a, a decision you guys made at some level. Uh, what gave you confidence that Ethan could just come through in that way? 
He's the hardest working, one of the hardest working kids on our team. Um, he is constantly out there kicking. And, and I kind of mentioned this last week is that all of our kickers do a great job of just keeping themselves busy. They're always working on their craft. Ethan, throughout all of spring ball, um, he is up there. He's always got a football with him. He's kicking, working on what he can do. So, you know, it was just kind of the next man up situation. You know, we can't, uh, I think we're doing our guys a disservice if we change our game plan because maybe you're a second team. But even in that game, he had had a kick blocked or maybe two, and a second one was blocked but went through. Yeah. So I'm thinking, dude, yeah. I mean, I was mad at you until he made it. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you got you got to at the end of the day, you got to make a sound decision that is going to be the best thing f to give you an opportunity to win. And I've seen Ethan. So at the end of the day, I knew that the, the team was going to rally around him, make or miss, uh, because everybody sees how hard he, he works. And he's a guy that deserved that opportunity. So we gave it to him and came through. Moving forward, you have the road game this week and then homecoming. How big will a homecoming event be in a season where, you know, we, we won't say you've turned the corner, but you've, you've taken on a couple of wins here and moved the program forward and the people got to be buzzing on campus a little bit. Yeah, the excitement's there. You know, I think uh, people have been waiting for this. I know as, as staff and as players, we've been waiting for this. Um, I think homecoming is going to take – you know, I might have a different answer in a week. You sure. know, if, uh, if we're coming into this game on a three-game winning streak, then obviously homecoming becomes a lot bigger deal. Uh, I think regardless, it's going to be a big deal that we've got a, a chance to perform against a team, um, again, here at home. You know, not the number one team in the nation where I think everybody knew that we were gonna, it was going to be a tough day for us. But we get a team that is much more in our wheelhouse. Uh, we've got maybe coming in off of a little bit of momentum. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for the university. I'm excited for the program. I'm excited for our guys. And, uh, you know, what we do is we take one day at a time, and that's what we keep preaching to them about. Final thoughts. You're talking about the buzz on campus while you're playing Olivet this week. Matt Brock has a basketball coaching clinic with high school guys coming in and all that. The nationally ranked volleyball teams are getting their bids about where they're going to be playing postseason. The athletic environment at Missouri Baptist is really just kind of on fire. It's exciting. It really is. You look at, um, give all the credit to the top, you know, the, the staff that Tom, uh, Dr. Smith has put together. Um, Coach Brock does a great job. I mean, he, when he was telling me some of the people coming into his clinic, it's, it's great. yeah, he, he knows a lot of people. He's using those connections to better our, our young men. He's bettering our school. Uh, obviously, Coach Nichols with the volleyball team, you know, Coach Ushold with the baseball team, Coach Dixon with the women's basketball team. You know, there's just a lot of momentum, and, and we have a ton of sports, so I couldn't even name everybody. But, you know, one thing that we talked about in our staff meeting is that the women's tennis team is, uh, you know, making huge improvements yeah. off uh, from last year so there's just a lot of excitement around the athletics department um, the type of young kids and young men and women that we're recruiting to this university not only talented athletically but they're they're doing the right thing um, in the classroom they're doing the right thing in the community and obviously like any school there's there's little issues here and there but I think the the young men and women that our coaches are bringing in are really representing what our school's about and it's just fun you know when you have uh, success in the athletic program it just makes the university campus kind of come to lo come alive and uh, I hope that next week we're bringing in a three-game winning streak and we can take that momentum into homecoming. It's an exciting time on the Missouri Baptist campus the Olivet Nazarene Tigers and the Spartans Brad Seigen will have the call for you this has been the coaches show you've been watching it on the Spartan Digital Network.